quick as they can make it. Spend it as quick as they make it, right? What else? Why else do you think people struggle financially? Lack of education. Lack of education, right? What if they have really great jobs, make very good money, but they're struggling for some sort of reason? What else? Overspending. Say it again? Overspending. Overspending, right? They, they don't train plan real finances in school. They don't, I mean, how to manage your budget and all that stuff, how to save to invest, right? Because that's how you build wealth, right? They don't train that stuff. So we're going to talk about some of that stuff here today, how to bridge that gap, okay? Um, I'm going to introduce you to our core strategy, which is designed to help you think and then act like a professional. Now, write this down, and we'll circle back to this later. Trade like a bank, not against them. Or, or trade like an institution, not against them. So trade like a bank or institution, not against them. And we're going to circle back to this a little bit later. Trade like a bank or institution, not against them. The third objective we're going to have here today is I'm going to give you the opportunity to work with us. To actually start and create your personal income and wealth education plan. And here's where people start. This is called the market timing program. So right now in the market timing program. And this is a three-day program. And we'll talk about this a little bit later. As a matter of fact, I'll actually build out for you here today what's within this program. It's the market timing program. And it's three days. The next one I have is October 4, 5, and 6. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then uh, I have two coming up actually in October. 11, 12, and 13. Uh, that's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday as well. Now, within our time here together, as I mentioned, I'm going to build out kind of different snippets on what's covered in this three-day program. That way you can see if trading and investing is even for you and actually make an educated decision here today. Okay? Um, oh, by the way, there is a tuition associated with that. It's, uh, it's $4.99. Okay? Uh, we put a tuition on that class or that program for a couple of reasons. One, what do you guys think? Do you think a lot of people procrastinate, especially with their finances? Why is that? It's easy. Not talk to you yet. I'll, I'll do it later, right? I'll, I'll get at it later. But you guys know, we all know how fast time flies by now, doesn't it? The more you wait to do different things, especially financially, the harder it actually is. It's easy to go out and you know clean your garage anytime. But if you're trying to build wealth, it doesn't happen overnight. So it's easy to push everything off. But you can't be pushing off anything financially because it's harder and harder each day that goes by. Okay. So we put a tuition on that because it actually made people follow through. Um, I mean, just think about today. We probably had 20 people on this list come in here today, and there's not eight people, eight people, right? So you guys actually took that first step because that's sometimes the hardest thing to do is take that first step, isn't it? I mean, you're probably thinking, what the heck are they going to try to sell me today, right? <laughs> that's what everybody thinks, right? There's so many things that people have bad experiences in the past for. That's why we do everything up front. Tell you guys right away, here's what we're talking about. Here's your next opportunity. If this makes sense, great. If it doesn't, you know, part runs, you know. Uh, but it actually helped people follow through with it. Another reason is it's, it's only 4 dollars You know, pretty much anybody can do that. If you have any interest on the financial markets, it's a low barrier of entry to get it. Because you guys know that you need money to trade and invest, right? It takes capital. Like, you have to have that. So, um, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, what it might take as far as, depending on what you're looking to trade, what type of capital you might need. Because you will need some capital to get something, okay? There's just no way around it, okay? So, let's define a couple things. You have two different buckets in your life. You have an income bucket, and you have a wealth bucket. Now let's start with your income bucket first. What do you guys think? What do you think, what, do, what would you consider in your income bucket? Where do you get your income from? Your job, right? J-O-B. By the way, you guys know what J-O-B stands for? Just over broke. Just over broke. You're exactly right. But think about that. It's kind of a laughable topic, but it's, it's actually, true, actually true. How many people that, that lose their job, that have one job, what are they then? Broke. So you got to have multiple streams of income backup plans, right? Well, but job is one of them. Where else can you get your income from? Business, okay, that's a good one. What else? 
trading or investing, maybe while you're here today, right? That's a potential source of income, isn't it? What else? Anything else? So what do you use your income for? To live. To live? How do you live? What do you guys spend it for? Your bills, right? You know, it's funny, I do, I've probably done thousands of these classes now, and it never fails. And nothing you're doing wrong, you're conditioned. Every single time, you know what is first? Bills. Because you're trained. You're trained to live to work. Think about this. You're trained to live to work. Why don't we change that a little bit today? How about work to live? You guys, are we a boring group? Do we like to have any fun? Yeah. <laughs> At least we laugh a little bit, right? What are some fun things you guys like to do? Yeah. Travel. Travel? Where do you like to go? Uh, anywhere out of, you know, out the country. Iowa? No. <laughs> I like taking cruises. Okay, cruises, there you go. And which aren't cheap, are they? Nope. I mean, you, you try to fly anywhere, it's not cheap. I was just in Dubai not long ago, and I tell you what, that place is not cheap. It's, if you get ever get a chance to go to Dubai, though, check it out. I can't even explain it, I just tell everybody it's modern. It's, it's, just, it's just different. Um, but it's not cheap, right? Flights are expensive. What else? Are there any other fun things you guys like to do? I mean, I was saying hotels are expensive. Hotels aren't, 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 aren't cheap either. Yeah. I was just in Nashville, and gosh, I think the hotel was like 400 bucks a night. I mean, that's crazy, just to sleep. I should have slept on the sidewalk. <laughs> There's too many people on the sidewalk there, unfortunately. So you got to have some fun, right? you got to work to have some fun. And you, but you, have to, you, you do have bills. you got to do that as well. So that's your, your income bucket. Now, what would you consider in your wealth bucket? What's that? What's that? What counts? Assets. What kind of assets? Like uh, uh, real estate. Real estate would be one, not your primary home, though, because you have to have somewhere to live. Right. Right. That I wouldn't consider. Don't try to live off your primary home in retirement because you're still going to need somewhere to live. So, but like maybe rentals or something, yeah. or. Flipping or something. Yeah. Okay, good. That's, so that's a good one. What else? What type of accounts? Money markets. Money market. Well, that doesn't make anything though. Yeah, yeah. That's one big. <laughs> <laughs> right. What else? What type of accounts? Four hundred one k. Okay. All right. IRA. Four hundred three b. TSP. Uh, either be IRA. Yep. I guess who has retirement accounts? 401s through work or? Yeah, the work through me. So, okay, so teacher, doctor, or governor, probably, right? The hospital. Hospital, yep, yep. Usually 403B is our, our usually teachers, uh, health care, and, and government. Usually. But it's the same thing as a 401k. Good. 401s, yeah. 401 through work. Okay. I raise it all. Mainly 401s. Okay, good, good, good. So that would be your. Retirement or your form of your wealth accounts. I kind of kind of big. What do you use your wealth accounts for? For retirement. For retirement, right? Yeah. The golden years. You know, we're not supposed to spend our golden years at the golden arches. We want to be able to have fun and do some certain things. Right. Now, do you guys think people have enough to retire? No. Mm -hmm. Why is that? But if you have four hundred one k's, remember you're told to go to school, get a job, get a four hundred one k, and you're going to be a billionaire when you're sixty five. You're told that stuff. And that's what everybody else is doing. But if nobody has any money, you think there's a problem with that? Right. Yeah. I mean, yes, yeah, a problem. There might be a problem with that. You can't go to work at that time. Yeah. You retire. You don't have enough money. Where do you leave? Exactly. Yeah. So if you're all being told and you're all being put into these four hundred one k's and it's not getting anybody to the retirement goals, you might need to think about doing something different. That's the conditioning that you're getting out there. You're told to do all this stuff, but if nobody has enough. Some people do, yes, but not everybody. I think this. I, I guess I would be lying if I told you the exact stat, but I don't know the number. But it's like seventy-five percent of people or eighty-five percent of people just don't. They're not gonna have enough to retire. Right? right? So, how do you build that wealth? How do you actually build wealth? Smart investment. Investing? How do you get the money to invest? Working. 
So that's your job, your, your income, but what type of income actually builds wealth? Positive. Residual. Then you do some Extra. Passive income. Extra income builds wealth. But if you only have one job, pays your bills, you got, everybody has bills, right? You know, I can't go to that, I got bills to pay. Yeah, we all got bills, man. By the way, before I go any further, can I be blunt with you guys today? Is that okay? Sure, go ahead. And then I, I may see a swear word once in a while. Is that okay with you guys? <laughs> I got to double check. Because sometimes we have kids in here, and I made the wrong decision one time without asking. So I always ask first. Is that okay? If I'm blunt with you guys. Um, there's a lot of crap out there right now, you guys. Right? I mean, people are trained and conditioned that you're supposed to go do all this stuff, and you're supposed to go, especially go watch YouTube and learn how to trade and invest. You guys know that YouTube's the worst place for financial in information. Can you build a skill by watching a video? Sometimes, Sometimes. maybe, but not all the time. How? How can you build a skill by watching a video? Uh, you're in healthcare, right? Yes. If you know, can you use that you uh, as an example? Sure. Um, anything particular that you do? Uh, get the patients ready for surgeries. Oh, there you go. Okay. So let's use that as, as an example. Um, tomorrow I'm going to go and take your place, but I'm going to go watch YouTube and see how you do that. Do you think I'm going to do the right things? No. Uh, not even close. Right. It's a skill you had to build. And you have probably had clinicals, right? Or trained by somebody else that knew what they were doing. There's nothing different in the financial markets, but you're trained to think, oh, i got to watch a YouTube video and I'm going to learn how to trade and invest. It's not possible. I know a lot of traders and investors, professional trader investors, and I don't know any of them that learned it first off on their own, but also um, off YouTube. Be very careful with you guys. There's a lot of crap out there. Follow my strategy. You're going to be a billionaire tomorrow. I mean, me being in the industry, I get peppered with this all day. That's all I see is that crap. Mm -hmm. It's annoying. And it's all fake. You know they're making their money probably off the YouTube views? Mm -hmm. They call it, what's the kids call it? Clickbait? Is that what they call it? Something like that? So be very careful with you guys. Okay. So how you build wealth is extra income and you use that wealth for retirement time. What's more important, income or wealth? Wealth. Well, how do you build wealth without income? They're both equally important because without income, there's no wealth. But without any wealth, there's no income when? During the retirement time. So they're both equally important. So when do you have to start to build that stuff? Right. It starts today, right? Remember we talked about earlier, the longer you wait to do things, the harder it is because it doesn't happen overnight, right? You guys ever heard the term, money doesn't grow on trees? Well, if it were to grow on trees, would it happen overnight? No. My dad always told me that. Money doesn't grow on trees, son. Well, I know that, right? Actually, well, trees aren't made up. Our money is made of paper. Or, or, or electronics. It's pretty much electronic now. So, does that make sense, you guys? Income and wealth? So, we talked through both of that already. Now, how do the markets work? You have buyers and sellers in the markets, right? Who's the buyers and who's the sellers in the financial markets? Who's the buyers? Yep. Who's the buyers and who's the sellers in the financial markets? Who's buying and who's selling? Yeah, but you know us. I mean, you buy yourself. Who's you? Public? We, we should be called the retail traders. Mm -hmm. Who else? Who else is buying and selling in the markets? Institutions. There you go. Institutions, banks, right? Mm -hmm. So how the markets work, it's, it's actually pretty simple. It is a, and it's an exchange of money from the people that don't know what they're doing mm -hmm. to the people that do. That's all it is. Now, who is it from typically? Who's typically losing money in the markets? The people who don't have proper education on how to invest. So the public? Public, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So the public typically loses money. Who's always making money? Banks. Banks and institutions. Yeah. So if the pu public is always losing, the banks are always winning, is there something bank the banks are doing differently? What is that? Knowledge 
all we all the same knowledge is out there. You guys ever so that's a good topic here to talk about real quick. You ever heard the hear the term knowledge is power? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You believe it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Are you sure? What if you can't apply that knowledge? That all the knowledge is all out there for everybody in the financial markets. It's all free. You can Google anything. But if you can't do it, knowledge is worthless to you. It's the skill. Because knowledge without application, which is a skill, right, mm-hmm. is worthless. So you've been trained and conditioned to think knowledge is power, so that's why everybody goes and reads all these books and reads all this information. You guys know those, and nothing wrong with this, by the way, those lifetime scholars, super smart people who go to school, they have all these degrees, but they're broke. Nothing wrong with that, but there's, there's a problem there, right? So knowledge is a power. It's worthless without application. So you need to build that skill. So the only thing that's different is the institutions have built the skill. And they have a strategy. How, do, how does the public, how do you guys go and trade and invest right now? I guess, who has traded and invested before? A little bit. A little bit? Okay. Little bit, yeah. um, some of you are in the market with retirement accounts. What have you traded, if you don't mind? Stocks. Okay, good. Stocks. Yeah. Options. Options. And anybody else really in? No? Pretty much brand new then? Good, good. So how, how easy... I'm a little bit of crypto. Okay. How easy is it to get in the market right now? Easy. Yeah. I mean, we could probably open a stupid app like Robinhood. By the way, be very careful with Robinhood. That's um, what You could probably open that up and, and trade it within, what, five minutes? Yeah. That's how easy it is? Yeah. So that's, what does everybody do? Open up Robinhood and... Oh, I'm going to put some money in here. I'm going to buy a stock and hope it goes up. GameStop. Which is gambling. Yeah. You're 100% gambling because it's so easy to get in the market. And then just think about this. You put your hard-earned money into the market with no skill. With a hope. Right? Is hope a strategy? No. And if most, I mean, the stats are out there. 99% of people lose money. Do you think that's why? Yeah. They're gambling. So how do the institutions do it then? Right? They build a skill. They have a strategy. Right? They don't just go out there and read a, read a news article and say, oh, Apple looks good today. It looks like Wall Street Bets talked about it today or whatever financial company or whatever. They don't do that. They build a skill. They have all the same knowledge that we have. Matter of fact, we have a built-in advantage over them. You guys know who Peter Lynch is. He's one of the most famous investors. He's just he quoted, as a retail investor, we have a built-in advantage over the institutions because we're small and they're large. Okay. So what do we got to do? Go to learn the skill. Learn the skill. What's the first thing I had you guys write down today? Trade, Trade like a bank. Trade like a bank, not against them. So I, what you need to do is identify where are they buying. Where are they selling? And then trade like them. Okay, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, so you guys see the difference between gambling and actually having a strategy? But don't don't just go put your hard earned money in the market and hope it goes up. Unless you like the thrill and you like to lose money, but if that's the case, you can leave a couple bucks here for me, right? The same thing, right? Because it's remember, it's just an exchange of money. Is all it is from the people that don't know what they're doing to the people that do. So how you bridge that gap is find out who's moving the markets. Who moves the markets? It's the institutions. It's the bank. It's the big money that moves the markets. So we got to find out what they're doing. Apply a strategy with them. Okay. We'll talk about our core strategy a little bit later on how that's done. The concept. Okay. So this is a, a snippet of the three-day program. Don't worry about writing this down super fast. I'll actually build out the majority of these bullets and give you little snippets of each one of those. That way, through our time here together, you can make an educated decision. If this makes sense. Okay. I'll give you guys an opportunity, matter of fact, a little bit later to get set up with this class. So let's talk through the different types of strategies in the markets. So you have income strategies and you have wealth strategies. The only thing different between an income strategy and a wealth strategy is just the time frame that you use on a price chart. Uh, by the way, for those of you that have done some trading, have you guys seen a price chart like this or if maybe you haven't? So this is called a price chart, and these are called candlesticks. So each one of these candlesticks represents price within a certain amount of time. 
Now, how this candlestick is formed is you have a and you have an open, you have a high, you have a low, and you have a close. So if price opens up there, closes there, positive day. Same thing when it goes down. You have an open, you have a high, you have a low, you have a close. Price opens up there, closes there, negative day. And how the candle is formed is it's green if it goes up, positive in that time frame, or it's red if it goes down. And this can be any time frame. Though. So remember I talked about how the difference between income and wealth is just a time frame that you use. If you're going to be trading for income, you're typically using, you're going to use a smaller time frame. Maybe like a five minute, 15 minute hourly. If you're going to be doing more of a wealth style trading, probably daily, weekly, monthly, because you're less active in your wealth accounts. You don't want to trade your IRAs and 401ks. You want to do more of an investment strategy. Not buy and hold though. We're going to talk about later why buy and hold. You guys said I could do one. Why buy and hold sucks, okay? It's a losing strategy over time, and I'll actually build it up for you with actual price charts and actual percentages, so you can see that, okay? So you may be in positions in your wealth accounts, weeks to months, maybe even years, depending on uh, the time frame that you use, okay? So for some of you that have done some trading, have you guys seen price charts like this before? All these different crazy indicators. By the way, free indicators, free magic... You guys know that there's free magical indicators that tell you when to buy and sell on platforms? Yeah. Did you guys know that? Mm -hmm. And they work phenomenal, don't they? Mm -hmm. Sense my sarcasm, right? Right. Mm -hmm. right? Okay, sometimes, I love that comment. Sometimes. Can you be consistent about sometimes? Right. You can't. So I'm not going to waste your time to explain it. Nothing you guys are doing wrong or anything. It's just what you see out there and what you're told, okay? Conditioning again, right? I'm not going to explain. There's hundreds. There's probably thousands of indicators out there. Bollinger Bands, Stochastic, Moving Averages, RSI, uh, whatever else, whatever crap they got. They got cool names. I mean, look at this cool name. Williams Accumulation Distribution. How cool is that? It sounds good, doesn't it? They're all free. They're mathematical equations, guys. The reason they don't work, or sometimes work, because you're, you, anybody, any golfers? Anybody like to golf? Nobody golfs? Oh, come on. If you ever golf, you get that one shot that keeps you coming back every time. That's what these are. You might, you might have a winner, you might get lucky one time, and you'll keep trying to use it because you'll keep trying to reinvent the wheel, but they're mathematical equations. You need that equation to form before it even tells you whatever strategy you should do. So what happens? You are late to the party, aren't you? The moves already happen. It's like it's like going to a, going to a birthday party and you walk in and you're like, hey, where's everybody? Well, the party was over about an hour ago, right? That's what happens with these free indicators. It's exactly what you paid for, right? So I'm not going to waste your time and explain them. They don't work. How the institutions are buying and selling? They're buying at wholesale and selling at retail. So write this down. Buy at wholesale. Sell at retail. So buy at wholesale, sell at retail. Next to wholesale, write demand. Next to retail, write supply. So I'm going to talk through how the institutions are buying and selling and how do we follow them. I'll go through that concept here real quick and I'll build it up later. So buy at wholesale, which is demand, sell at retail, which is supply. Now, how they're buying and selling is institutions buy what they would call a block. It is a block in a, in a price area. We call them zones. So this would be a, in this case, a demand zone. Okay. So when they're buying and selling, they're buying such large amounts of money, it creates movement in the price chart, and that's what we need to identify. This is a story, you guys. This is all a story. And once you understand how to read the story, you put odds, and probabilities. And then low risk, high reward, high probability entry points into the market. And before I go any further, you guys know that I can't teach you how to trade in two hours. <laughs> you guys know that's not possible, right? So just got to be clear on that because a lot of people think that. Well, I'm going to come to a trading place and, and learn how to trade in two hours. It's not possible. What is trading? Knowledge or skill? Skill. Skill. Skill, right? So. For those of you that have done some trading, by the way, let me ask you this. If, you've, if you're going to be getting into a trade or investment, do you think you should watch it? Pay attention yes. to it? Yes. 
But what you create if you watch that go up and go down and go up and go down? Emotions, don't you? Okay. There's two types of emotions in the market. Fear and... What's greed? Greed. Right? What's that? What's greed? <laughs> yeah, there you go, right? Which would be the same thing as fear almost, right? Actually, it's a combination, I call it. But it's an emotion, right? So what do you do when you have emotions? You change. You don't make the right decision. So you have to have a strategy wrapped around it. Risk management. Remember I talked about it at the beginning? Risk management is the number one component of trading and investing. Keeping your risk small and your reward much higher. So you should not watch your trades and investments because when you wrap proper capital management around that, you don't have to watch it because it will get you in and get you out and you don't even have to be at your computer to watch it. Because the platforms are all pretty sophisticated. They have been for many years. It'll, it'll do it automatically for you, okay? So you should not watch those trades and investments. So you place your entry point, your stop loss, which is your risk management, right? That's the only way you can risk uh, manage your risk is by having a stop loss and a target. So when price comes down to your entry point, it'll get you in and then get you out. You don't even have to be at your computer. Excuse okay. Sure. What do you mean get you in and out? Is there, is there an app or something that tells you when to buy and when to sell? What do you mean get you in and out? The, so the platform, so you put the parameters in. So let's just say you want to be a buyer right here. Let's, okay, let's rewind here for a second. Price is right here. You want to be a buyer right here, okay? You can place your buy or order and your two sell orders. Sell if you're wrong, sell when you're right, walk away. The computer, the platform, will execute automatically for you. How long will that last if you put it like this week and that price doesn't come down in, in two weeks? Good question. Will that matter. still be good? It doesn't matter. Time doesn't matter. Okay. Let me show you why. Remember we talked about earlier, each candlestick is a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. price within a certain amount of time. Let's just say this, let's just say each candle is one week. Then this would have took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine weeks to get into. Mm -hmm. What if it was a five minute chart? which means each candlestick means five minutes. Nine times five is 45 minutes. So that's what I talked about. That's the difference between trading and investing. Time, time, the time frame that you're, the duration of your trade has nothing to do with anything. It's just, you just let it work because you're protected on both ends. Okay? The, that'll be discussed more in that three-day program to give more insight because we're gonna be, obviously we have more time. We're gonna be able to show you in real, real time how that works. Yep, if you're not sure. Yep. So you have to be you have to be in a platform for to do that, right? So to be in any trade or investment has to be done on the platform. Yep. So we actually have a core strategy that actually has steps on how and where to find your entry points, your targets, how to put your um, in the right spots. We actually have a step by step process that will actually walk you through that. Okay, I'll actually build that all over. So let's start to build out these three days. So what would your definition of leverage be? Anybody know what leverage means? What's leverage? And not everybody at one time. <laughs> Too much, guys. <laughs> Any guesses? I'll start over here. I think it's like leverage is like an advantage that you have. What kind of advantage? Okay, we're on the right path. Yeah. I would say one, if there's an A and B, A may have a little more substance than B have, and you use it to maybe manipulate B. Uh, not quite. Nope, not that kind of Not quite. So, let me give you an example of what leverage is. Hey, does anybody own a home? Yes. So a lot of you own homes, good. How did you buy that house? Did you pay cash? Take out a loan. Mortgage, right? Mortgage, okay, yeah. That's leverage. Let's just, so we're in Edina here, so most homes here are probably about 750000 here in Edina. I'd say that's probably the average. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I'd say you could probably take a small fifty grand down payment to control a $750,000 house. That's leverage. Taking a small amount of money to control a much larger asset. You own that home for fifty grand. You have that's leverage. You can do the same thing in the financial markets at a much smaller magnitude. 
and, but you actually dictate what that looks like. Okay? So there's three leveraged assets in the market. Any guesses on what they are? Let's start with stocks first. Stocks is not leverage. So you may get two to one what you do, right? So let's say not no leverage. With stocks, do you need a lot of money to trade or a little bit of money to trade? I've heard a couple different ones. So a little. A little? So it's actually a lot. Because if you want to trade more than four times per week, you're required by law to have twenty-five thousand dollars in that account. Now I don't know your world, but time we're putting twenty-five grand in an account for a measly four trades just is not efficient. Yeah, that's why that's why the public doesn't do well because they're tying up all of their money for such small opportunities. Okay, so you need a lot of money, in my opinion. In the, I mean, in the government's opinion, this is FINRA, is what it is. It has that twenty-five thousand dollar rule. Okay. Matter of fact, if you go, if you have less than twenty-five thousand, and you try that for that that next trade, um, some brokers will actually freeze your account because they won't let you do it. And some of this is like for like ninety days. So they freeze your account. They take your money. They don't take your money. They freeze your account. They won't let you trade. Okay. So you can. Yeah, you're you're not twenty thousand. That's how twenty-five. Yep. Trade more than four times per week. Yep. Okay. So you need a lot of money. How many hours per day is the stock market open? No? Six and a half hours, 8.30 until three, our time here. Okay, six and a half hours. Now who works during that time during the day? <laughs> Most people, right? Now how efficient can you really be trading stocks while you're at work? Maybe I not very efficient, right? May sneak off to the bathroom and try to do a quick trade. Do you think that's a, a strategy or is that gambling, you guys? That's, that's gambling. That's gambling, right? Let's try to get out of that mindset, right? So limitations of money, limitations of time, and, and basically no leverage. There's three leverage assets that you can trade in the markets. One of you actually said that you traded them. Trade this first one. Options. <laughs> Options. <laughs> Options is the first leverage asset, okay? So, what are options? What are options? Um, I think in simple terms, I would say you use little money to control a bigger stock. So you just buy little, like you, you, you just say you can use maybe two hundred to control a stock of maybe half a thousand, something like that. So you're on the right path. Okay. So there's three types of options. There's calls, there's puts, and there's spreads. So, and basically a spread is just a combination of calls and puts, that's all it is, okay? So, options has up to 10 to 1 leverage. What does that mean, 10 to 1 leverage? For every dollar you have, you can control 10, which is buying power. Now you have efficiency with your dollars, okay? Obviously that's on stocks or ETFs. ETFs are exchange traded funds, traded just like a stock, same thing, it's just a basket. Capital requirements because you have the leverage are much less. I have between two and ten thousand because remember I said earlier you will need some money to trade and invest. You just can't go in the market with no money. It, well, you you you, you can probably open up an account, but it's kind of like uh, going to the gas station without a car, right? So, in my opinion, with options to be able to to really do anything with it, I think you need about seventy five hundred. That's my opinion. But yes, you can open accounts with between two and ten thousand because you do have that leverage. But you're gonna miss out on a lot of strategies with only 2,000 bucks, okay? You're still getting some, okay? So, but you do have that opportunity now in the buying power, the efficiency. Can be used for investment income, portfolio growth, or insurance, okay? Find opportunities in up, down, or sideways markets. And then obviously, just like anything that you do in life, you need responsible capital management. Now, I'm going to show you the power of options real quick here. And I'm going to throw some terminology at you here. And, and don't worry about understanding it. You're not going to at this point. Okay? Don't, don't worry about that. Just think concept here. Let's start with a stock. If you buy 100 shares of a stock, stock price is at 161 bucks per share. How much money do you need to buy that stock? 16000 bucks, right? Now, I don't know your world, but tying up 16 grand for a measly 100 shares is just not efficient. It's just tying up money to do nothing, basically, right? 
Let's talk about the option. With options, you control the same amount of shares, 100 shares. In this example, don't worry about terminology, just in concept, it's called a call option. And the strike price is actually $7.35, which means you're paying $7.35 per share. So, how much money do you need to control 100 shares at 735? Seven hundred thirty-five bucks, which is capital efficiency. Now you can do a heck of a lot more with less money. You don't need sixteen thousand; you only need seven hundred thirty-five. So on the path, that's kind of what you were talking about, there. Okay. Remember, I mentioned earlier that options were created to minimize risk in the markets. What is your risk on buying the stock? Every dollar, sixteen thousand dollars. I think. Remember, we talked about the beginning of stocks. Our trading is risky. Yeah, that's very risky. Yes. What is your risk on this trade? Seven thirty-five. Seven thirty-five. That is why options were created to minimize risk in the markets. But just like anything, if you don't know how to use it, you're not going to be able to do it, right? Right. That's why you know stocks. Yeah, they have their place. But if you can do other things, wouldn't it be advantageous to get into that and use less capital? Let minimize your risk, right? But you're not told this stuff, are you? No. You may hear about it on TV, but they'll say all these terms that confuse the hell out of you, right? There's a reason for that. There's actually code, not code words, but different terms for certain things. You guys know what hawkish means? Sounds like a crazy term, doesn't it? All it means is raising interest rates. Where'd you go? Hawkish. Hawkish. You know what dovish is? Lowering interest rates. So they use all these terms so you guys don't know what they are. And it confuses you, which makes you think, well, oh, I don't want to do that. That's all risky. Right? Does that make sense to you guys? Is this conditioning kind of coming coming around now? Why you're seeing and hearing all this stuff, right? Thanks. Okay. So let's start building all these three days. So on your paper, go, go day one, day two, and day three. So I'm going to start building these three days up so that way we do snippets here so you can see what's within, within this three-day program. <coughs> uh, under day, day two, under day two, write options. So on day two, there's actually a, a, several pieces on options on day two, is what they are, why you would utilize them, time today that would be most beneficial, Basically good, bad, and ugly. So that way you can make your own educated decision if options is the right vehicle for you. By the way, these are vehicles. Anytime I say assets, they're vehicles. They all do certain things. Okay. So options under day two. The next leverage asset is futures. Anybody know what futures are? Have you heard of the term? Anybody know what they are, though? Sounds like a crazy term, doesn't it? All it is, it's just... Consider it like a commodity. It's gold, oil, silver, corn, lean hogs, uh, S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the Dow. Those are futures contracts. Okay? So futures has up to 20 to 1 leverage. So what that means is every dollar you have, you can control up to 20. Okay? Great leverage. Now you can do more with less. So, most, so with the raise of hands, who works during the day? Almost everybody? Okay, good. What if I told you that you could trade at night? Futures is 24 hours a day. Okay? So it's open, open around the clock. Technically 23, but it's all 24. So now you have the opportunity for what? When we talked about how do you build wealth? Multiple sources of income. income. Could this be a potential second source for you? Yes. And not have to go somewhere? Let your positions or your, your, or your trades work for you? Right? But you need some capital, right? So you have a market that's open around the clock. It actually opens up on Sundays, so you can trade on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Sunday at 5 o'clock and it closes on Friday at 5 o'clock. So Saturday's not open. Okay. Capital requirements are much less. You need about anywhere between three and 5,000, depending on which broker that you open your account with. Between three and five. Would have to put futures on day three or one? Um, write futures under day one. Yep. So under day one, write futures because we're going to go through on day one what the, what the futures market is, times of day, because there's different uh, 
activity in the futures market, depending on the time of day, whether you want to be a short-term trader or a longer-term trader, um, how the leverage works as well. So that way you actually understand it. I'm going to give you snippets here today because that's all we have time for. But so you can understand it and see it in real time as well. Okay. No limitations of number of trades you can do. Remember, you, uh, with stocks, you need 25 grand. I could, market's open now, I could, uh, I could make 25 trades right now in the next 10 seconds and there's no limitations, okay? You can go long, you can go short, you have tax advantages. Um, you guys know that you, there's tax on pretty much anything these days. You gotta have a tax them only lot, it seems like, right? Um, so with stock, what's stock tax? Maybe 35% roughly, I'm guessing. Um, so let's just say you have two traders. Stock trader, no pictures, please. No pictures, please. No pictures, please. No pictures, please. Oh, yeah. You can write anything down you want. So let's say you have two traders, stock and futures. Okay? You missed the beginning, so don't worry about it. Yeah. Stock and futures. Um, get to buy donuts. Um, a stock trader, let's say that they both make 100 grand. Okay? Stock trader, let's say right around 35% is what you're going to uh, lose in taxes or pay in taxes. So you keep how much? 65,000, right? At 35% tax, mm -hmm. right? Is my math right? Still yeah. Good. Good. yeah, so you keep 65,000 of that 100,000 because tax. The futures trader, it's called the 60-40 rule, but we'll cover that in the three-day class. On an average, you're gonna pay probably between 20 and 25%, let's say 25 and a high. So that same 100 grand, you keep how much? 75. 75, so you keep more money. But you're told everywhere to go buy what? Stock, but you don't keep as much. Does that make any sense to you guys? Right? You'll hear the terms on TV and stuff. Fixed income assets. This is the stuff that they're talking about. Institutions. This bank. You know, they're they're trading fixed income assets. They're not just trading stock. They're trading futures as well. They're trading options. They're trading other things that we'll get into. I just want to ask one. So, like, when the Fed uh, lowered the interest rate, does that affect this interest on tax? De uh, depending on what it is. So that's a good question. So there's correlations and, in and inverse correlations, right? So do you think, here's, because there's, because there's interest rate futures contracts. You can trade a 30 year bond and 10 year bond uh, for bonds as far as. So let's talk about correlations here Beth, and this will answer your question. Do you think the price of corn has anything to do with Apple stock? No. So there's there's no correlation there. But things that would be correlated to interest rates, which we'll get into in a second. Yep. So 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 yes, some some of them will. Yep. So that's why understanding how that works is important, isn't it? Right. Yep. Good. Good question. Obviously, in responsible capital management. So uh, day one futures. I think we covered that already. <clears throat> There's one more leveraged asset, and I'll guess is on what it is. I'm gonna guess you all have traded this next one. You didn't even know. Um, What's that? We'll see time. We all trade time. <laughs> that, that is exactly right. But not the next asset. Oh, okay. Who's, you know, we're gonna talk about time in a second. When I get some charts pulled up, I want you to Mention that to me so I don't forget. Okay. Uh, Forex. Have you heard of the term Forex? Foreign exchange. That's your currencies. Who's traded currency? Nobody? I uh, thought about it, but I think you don't do it. Has anybody traveled outside the country? Yes. Where, where did you go? India. India. I don't know what the currency there is. Rupees? Rupees? Rupees. Yeah. So did you went there, you probably exchanged dollars. Yes. Rupees. When I went to Dubai, it was called the Dirham. I think it's called the Dirham, but it was I called it Dirham because I thought it was cool. Right? So you're exchanging one currency for another. That's what the foreign exchange market is. That's what foreign exchange. So you probably all have traded it at one point, just not through this type of market. Okay. So that's your um, leverage asset. The third one has up to fifty to one leverage. So now you have a heck of a lot more buying power with your dollars now, right? Let's just say you have two thousand dollars. How much money can you control? How much currency can you control with 2,000 bucks at 50 to one leverage? 
hundred thousand dollars. Fifteen times two thousand. So your 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 two thousand dollars will act like one hundred thousand dollars in the current market. So that's that why that's why you have buying power. You can do more with less. Just like the mortgage example, right? People kind of look at me like I have two heads when I'm talking about this, but you're already doing this in your everyday life. It's just something different. None of this stuff is new. It's just a little bit different. Right? Hopefully I can inspire you guys to do things differently today. Because mm -hmm. sometimes that's scary for people to do different things. But it's just different until so you understand more about it. Right? Yeah. Just like anything. I, just play, I started playing guitar. Was I scared? Kind of. I didn't know what I was doing. Got some lessons and I learned some, someone taught me how to do it. Now I can play songs. Right? right. It's the same thing. 24-hour market as well. This is open around the clock. Remember, this has to be open around the clock. This is what facilitates international trade and investment. Big banks, hedge funds, multinational firms, us. We all have all the ability to trade this. Companies are doing this, right? Talked about that. Capital requirements are much less as well. Okay, technically you can open up a trading account with 500 bucks. Let's be real. You're not gonna do a whole lot with 500 bucks, okay? Um, I say if you got about 2,000 bucks, that's a good place to start. By the way, I don't care how much money you have. Start as small as you can. Learn the business first. Because you can remove what? Emo emotions, right? Once you remove that emotion, you scale it. What's the easiest business to scale? This one right here. Because do you have to buy equipment, hire employees? No. Nope. What do you do? The Change the dollar amount. That's all you got to do. That's how you give yourself a raise. Okay. So I like to say around two thousand bucks. That's a good place to start. No limitations. You can go long. You can go short. Same tax advantages. You keep more of your money. Does anybody like to keep more of your money? Right. And then obviously, just like anything, you need responsible capital management. So, out of these markets, you have.